This is Fisher Frying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 250 DS, a two-stroke liquid-cooled 36 horsepower engine that is used in all of our single seat designs. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Uh, I'd like to say hello to anyone who's new to the channel. We try to present interesting content for people who are interested in wooden aircraft and ultralights and sport planes and electric propulsion and many other flying related topics. To our subscribers, thank you for coming back. We're pleased to say that we have 919 subscribers as, the shooting, as, as of the shooting of this video. Our current target is 1,000 subscribers, so keep hitting that subscribe button. When we reach the goal of 1,000 subscribers, there will be a random draw for a free set of plans and five t-shirts. So uh, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, you may win. Uh, before our main event today, which is an introduction to our uh, introductory tail kits, some info on splicing as well. I'd like to give an update on the formation of our new division, Electro Thrust Propulsion Systems. Well, we're pleased to announce that we have come to an agreement with Jonathan Bariclo, president of Silent Electrics, to market electric propulsion systems for aircraft under the Electro Thrust brand name. First system to be delivered for sale upon the completion of its testing will be the Thrust Pack 3018. This system has a peak power output of 40 kilowatts, 53 horsepower, and a continuous output rating of 18 kilowatts or 24 horsepower. Battery capacity will yield an endurance of better than one hour with this system uh, with reserves when operated in a standard flight profile. Now, Jonathan is a retired NASA electrical engineer with years of experience in the development of pure electric and hybrid electric propulsion systems and I'm very pleased to be working with him. Recent reductions in the input costs of the system's components will allow us to provide complete system pricing that achieves our goal of uh, giving you robust packages at prices that builders can afford. The initial thrust pack 3018 system with better than one hour endurance with reserves will retail for under $10,000 US plus shipping. So I'd like to go now to a quick ARIA update. We have our cowl on its way to the shop and we are currently evaluating the metal components of the kit to determine whether we will be fabricating them in-house or having them fabricated by outside vendors. Again, all with the big thing is, is try to keep the cost low. We've just purchased and installed a TIG welder torch cooling system that will allow for better efficiency at our weld station. And all efforts are going to be focused on design for manufacturing um, and the ease of assembly by the builder. And our goal will be to provide a kit with as short a time as possible between receiving the kit and your first flight. So I'm going to turn things over now to Lionel, who is going to take you on a tour of the tail kit. And he's also going to talk about splicing, which we have added as a tail kit experience. So. Take it away, Lionel. Hello, guys. Um, today we will uh, speak about the tail kit that you may order from uh, Fisher Frank Products. And I would like to show you what is included in your kit, um, uh, in the tail kit. So we have 14 different kits that are available right now as a tail kit in Fisher Frank Products. This one, this particular one, is for a Super Corolla kit. So I will show you exactly what is included. So first, we start with the, uh, the drawings. So the drawings came uh, in a row like this. They are full-size drawings. So when you work on your kit, you just uh, expand one drawing, depending on which parts you are uh, building right now. One drawings on the big table, and then you put on top of that a plastic 
uh, clear plastic uh, sheets just to protect the, the drawings, the paper drawing, because they are made in paper, just to protect the drawings when you will start to glue the, the parts together. Uh, like this, you can remove at the end the plastic, uh, the clear plastic sheets, and then you can still keep the, the paper drawings in good shape for uh, certification or whatever you need for uh, the local government to uh, apply for registrations. So, with the tail kit, you get only the, the drawings that you need for the, um, the tail kit itself. You don't get uh, everything included, of course. If you want to go further with the, the, the full kit, you can just uh, ask us and you can just send the drawings. You can buy the, the drawings. So in this kit, particularly for the super color, you will get two drawings, but it might also be possible that you get only one drawings because in one big drawings, you might have all the parts that you have to cut from uh, that drawing. This one uses two different drawings, so it depends on the size of the plate, of course. So uh, here it's two drawings. So uh, in the kit, you will receive also the T T88. Uh, this is the uh, composite glue, uh, resin glue that you will uh, get into the kit. This, those ones are quarter uh, bottles, but you will get only the small one, just what you need to, to finish the till kit. Uh, if you order a full kit from us, you will get two times uh, this, set, this setup because you need more, more glue, of course. Also, with the kit, you will receive also the uh, echo bond from Stuart's system. This is the glue, uh, the bonding glue that we use uh, to, to cover the tail, uh, as well with the fabric, enough fabric that you can cover the horizontal stab, the elevator, and the rudder. You will create the, the, the fin on that kit, but we don't cover uh, the fin right away because it's part of the fuselage, so you will cover the fin with the fuselage in one, one single piece of, of fabric. So, also, we provide an invoice, and we provide also a BOM. The BOM is the list of material that you will receive. Just ask you to make sure that when you receive the kit, you make sure that you receive all the parts that are listed on, on the BOM and it helps us as well to uh, follow you with technical questions. If you have an issue, we always speak the same language. It will be, uh, for example, the CW7. If you say I've got an issue with that piece of wood, you just say, okay, I've got an issue with the CW7 and directly I know what are you, you're talking about and we don't spend time on the phone on, on emails looking after what you are uh, asking me as a technical question. That kit that you see here on the table, it's a huge kit as you see, but they come in the small, small boxes. Um, this is a full kit, full setup for the tail kit, but on purpose we decided to provide you um, the means part of the, the horizontal stab or uh, the rudder as two different pieces. Why? Because we try to make sure that in that particular kit is a training kit mostly. The training kit, you can use it to buy the rest of the kit, of course, later and put that training kit onto a full kit. Uh, you don't have to redo again the, the tail kit, of course, uh, but we would like to um, to put your hands in all the, 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 uh, the process that you will have to use during the full assembly kit or the, the, the full construction kit that you, will have, that you will have later. So here we decided to cut the, uh, the rear spar um, of the tail kit in two to create what we call a splice. A splice is a specific joint that you make with two long pieces that we cannot shape in small boxes or small crates or either to, to source a big long pieces like this. Uh, the fuselage for example, the long joint of the fuselage might be 18 feet long, very difficult to, to cut with a machine. So we provide you two times nine feet long pieces that you will have to splice. If you make a good splice joint, you don't have to worry about this because it's very solid, but there is a specific way to do that. As well as the lamination that I showed you last week, the lamination is a lot of job that you will have to do for the, for the tail kit. Um, it's a process that you have to learn and we, we can review the video the last week and have a look on that things. This is one of the process. And so today I would like to make sure that you understand the splice process. And maybe next week we will go further with something else, uh, maybe, cutting blocks or something like this that you will have also to do all around the, 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 the kit that you will, you will build. So um, I think that's it for the kit right now. So we will jump now on the splice process. 
here we go. Now the splice. So when you receive the, the tail kit, you will receive, this is just a piece of wood that I cut for, for, for example, but you will receive the kit that it will be bonded together with uh, tape, it will be attached together with tape. When you remove the kit out of the box, make sure that all the two pieces like this stays together because we did it on purpose that you avoid any grain direction issues, stuff like this. So uh, they, are, they will be cut out of the same, same part. So you remove the tape around the things and then you have the, uh, the slope already cut for you. So the idea is to put them back together like, like it is right now. So we cut roughly the parts for you. It's just to make you happy uh, to get the parts already with the, the nice slope and the nice, uh, a nice cut. But you will have to finish the sandings and make sure that they are perfectly uh, matching together like it is now, okay? So just use sandpaper on the block or something, just clean the edges, stuff like this, maybe some scratch that you might have with the, 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 the bent so blades and just make sure they are well sitting together. So this is the idea how to make a splice joint. Now how to apply the glue? Always apply the glue on both sides. Make sure that the wood is uh, soak the glue, it will, uh, on both sides. And then when the glue is soaking slowly, after a few seconds of applying the glue, you can just join the two pieces together and you just clamp them. If you clamp them too, too, too hard, the glue will try to squeeze out of the joints so or maybe the, the the slope might move like this as well so make sure that you clamp uh, the wood perfectly but not too tight the the idea is to have a thin layer of glue that is in between the two pieces so uh, we need room we always say we need room for the glue if you clamp too hard you won't have glue into in the between we want to create like a weld so leave, clamp it slowly with, with a piece of, maybe a block, put two blocks around that things that they are just sitting into together and the wood will, will, will do what it's supposed to do with the glue. It will soak the glue slowly and it will create a nice layer in between the two joints. You will have a perfect uh, splice. The idea, um, if you're not sure what you're doing and we recommend that you do that as well, as well that you just inside of a long jour for the fuselage, for example, the tail is more difficult, what you can do, just route a little bit around the splice and apply a plywood, 1.8 plywood or 1.16 plywood, uh, we call that things a gusset. And just glue a gusset on each side and you will have a perfect system that, that won't break. It will be even more solid than the rest of the, the parts. If you're okay with your uh, splice, you don't have to apply a gusset if the, 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 the shape is in the right position, if it doesn't move and if the glue is, you have the layer of the glue. Uh, but if you have any troubles, just put a little gusset on both sides, like a sandwich, and it will be, it will be perfect. Now I would like to explain as well something about, because here for the tail kit, we uh, cut for you those two pieces, uh, but when you will build the kit, and I would like to take the opportunity to say the things for the builders that kit, build the kit, when you build the kit, you may have to cut yourself that slope into the, the, the launch wall. So I will explain you how to do the, the splice for the launch wall. So let's say that you have, this is the launch wall that you have to cut and put another one together. So what you will have to do, just cut the slope, whatever that side or that side, we don't care. The thing is that you have to respect some rules. There is two or three different rules. The first one, we have to have at least a slope of 10 to 1 minimum. The best would be 10, uh, 12 to 1, means for each one inch like this, 12 inch like this. This is three quarter, I let you make the math, but it should be, this one is a bad example, it's just for the, the purpose of showing the things. Uh, but you should have 12 inch by one inch, or maybe let's say roughly 10 inch by three quarter of inch of wood. This is the first rule, we have to make sure this is like this. If you use two different lengths of wood, let's say this is two different wood that I would like to put together with a splice, make sure that the grain is the right position. I show you here in the example just right here, the three different uh, um, um, grain direction that we might end up. 
there is one that's correct, the others are not correct. So the first one, the, the A for example, the green is the right direction. The issue is that the slope is not big enough. We have only a slope about six or seven inches, which should be 10 minimum, as I remind, remind you. The second one, the, the, the green direction, as you see, is almost perpendicular to the, the other uh, piece of wood. We don't want this. We want the, the, the green direction in the same direction. Or to recognize the green direction, it's very easy. Just take the wood and you will see lines. The lines are just the green direction. Make sure that the green direction is in the right position. There is only two green directions based on a square piece like this. Why? Because the green direction sitting here is the same as this one. And this one is the same as this one. So you have one chance of two to make a mistake. So make, take the time that when you have the green direction, check how the green is on this one, check the green or on this one S and match them together. If this one is three quarter, uh, 45 degrees difference, turn the piece of wood, make sure it's matched. There is no green direction on this one because it's on the other side. Throw the piece away, take another one. Make sure that the green direction are on both sides the same. And then you will end up with a good uh, um, uh, splice. So, in the number C on the picture, uh, the, 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 the drawing number C, you will see this is the correct way to do it. 12 or 10 inch minimum by one, uh, and the green direction in the right position for the two parts. That's it for the, the splice. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week. To help us out, please like and share our videos. And to receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time from the nest.